I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, installing programs. Um, I use Linux and in the past I've always used something called Debriate. So when I wrote a, a program, if I wanted to pass it on, I'd, uh, I'd pass it through the Debriate uh, installer program. I'm talking about stuff written in Python. Um, if I want to put it on Windows, you can use one of the many programs around to convert a Python to an AXE and then use a Windows installer. But working on Linux, I used to use Debriate. And uh, I've just written a program and I tried to uh, use Debriate. So I went to uh, the download location, downloaded Debriate because uh, I've not used it for years and it wouldn't install. It started throwing up errors about dependencies. So uh, I had to find uh, another way of uh, installing a program. So I thought I'd, uh, I'd try making a snap. That seems to be the, uh, the thing these days, create snaps. Um, and I downloaded a program called Snapcraft. And then using Python, I, uh, I did the usual hello world. And, and great, it worked. But then when I started uh, getting serious and tried to, uh, to create a snap of something written using a proper GUI, in this case TK Inter, um, I was going round and round in circles and uh, I was getting absolutely nowhere. I went searching around uh, using Google, went down all the various uh, sites and, and everybody seems to be struggling. So uh, <laughs> I've been struggling as well. I'm going to I'm going to reveal um, what I did and how I finally cracked it. And like everything else, when you finally uh, work out how to do it, it's extremely easy. Uh, <laughs> when you find out. So let's uh, let's uh, go to my uh, my program. Um, my development Ken's Ken's test. I was. Messing around with something called Kent's test. Here's my uh, my folder, um, and uh, I I found a lot of the information from a fellow in New Zealand who's written a software program called Proxicart or something like that. Uh, but he's no longer developing it. He's given up on it and he's gone on to something different. But I've got quite a bit of information from his um, struggles, and so you'll find them using it in in this demonstration. Like that, that's one of his icons. <clears throat> so let's give the man credit where credit's due. Okay, for the first thing you've got to do um, is download Snapcraft. And that's fairly in, uh, easy, of course. You just open a, uh, open a command line and type Snapcraft and, uh, and your Linux system will guide you through installing it, especially if it's Ubuntu or one of the variants. This is, in fact, uh, X Ubuntu. So you download Snapcraft. Then you've got to get a, a Python program. So we start off with a nice simple one, open with Genie. And here we have my Python program. Um, we could go full screen. I don't think it makes any difference there. No, it doesn't. You're not going to gain anything. So that this is the program. Now. Years ago, I used to write in C, and when you write in C, you always have a, a main function. And uh, and of course, when you're writing stuff in Python, you don't usually bother with that. You can uh, type your hello world or whatever you want to do. You don't need a main function. However, when you uh, when you try and install it with Snap Snapcraft, um, it tells you off. It has to have a main function. So this is a simple little Python program and I've, I've stuck in a main function at the bottom just to make Snapcraft happy. So now we operate it and there we have it, a very simple little TK Inter window GUI. I've not even put uh, the hello world or anything like that on it. It's extremely simple. It's just a, a, a GUI written in TK Inter and there it is. 
So now we want to build a Snapcraft uh, Snap install with it. So go back to my example of my website. And you've got to create all these folders on your home computer. Now, um, I will be putting on my website of uh, cftb.net a zip file containing all these so that you can uh, you copy it exactly and then just change the names and things when you want to. So the first thing you need is a bin folder with your Python executable. And as I said, it's got to have a, a mains function in it. The next folder, because my program I, I, I'm doing is called Ken's Test. That was another little problem I had, that if you give it an elaborate file name uh, with uh, uh, dashes and underscores or whatever, um, it doesn't work because this installer uses things like that as part of its, uh, its operation. So you've got to keep name short and simple. Um, if I want a more elaborate name, when I put it on a, a menu button, which I'll do later on, um, not in this demonstration, well then I can give it a fancy name for the menu button. So the program is called Ken's Test. Originally, if you're observant, you'll see it used to be called Ken's Hyphen Test. And I couldn't get that to work. I went round in knots, so I gave up and I just called it Ken's Test as one word. So then you want another folder called Ken's Test. And this is this is really pointless, but anyway, you've got to have it. You've got to have it. So we we'll create a folder called Ken's Test and we put in it a dummy Python file that is not used for anything. It's not used. We'll open it in Genie and show you. All it does is report the version of your program. Nothing else, just a couple of underscores, the word version and an equals because the setup compiler expects it. So because it expects it, well, we have to put it in. Otherwise, the program will crash. The setup file used is so simple and basic that if it doesn't find the things that uh, it needs, there's no error trapping. There's no, you know, error code. If you try and open a file, and uh, there's no if and else statements. So if it doesn't open it, it, it does something else. The, the, the thing crashes, but it's a very simple little setup program we'll get to in a bit. Uh, but because you're only going to use it once, um, there's the, the not a lot of point in rewriting it and uh, and getting it working properly. Um, you can live with the uh, live with it as long as you remember to install everything at once. Next folder we'll call Snap. Create that, and in that you've got some um, bits of code which you need, which um, which are not written by me. You need these to get it to work. Um, the GUI and the local. The GUI actually has the code here for the desktop um, to put an icon on your desktop and in your menu, but uh, that's not used at present. We'll get to that later. And uh, local, it launches, which is some uh, Debian stuff which you've got to have. So, but the vital thing here is a program called Snapcraft dot yaml y a m l we'll open that with genie and this you've got to edit you've got to do a bit of editing this is program name you've got to have the name of your program there ken's test this um is is the version of, uh, of software it's using core 18. It doesn't really you know you can be core 18 core 20 whatever i've left it on core 18. version that's the, the, the program version of my program that I've written. A summary as to what it is, simple TK into demo. A description of what it does. Again, those are not, no, not really important, as long as they're there, as long as they have something in them. You can already edit it later. Then we come to this grade. That's got to be development. You change it later to... Uh, 
to something else. Uh, but because we're just um, debugging, you call it development, and the confinement mode, development mode. Those are important at the moment while you're doing your, your development work. Then again, you've got to have your program name there, Kent's test, that's important. And you've got to have uh, instructions as to where the program is to be found. And I put it in the bin folder. So it called command is in bin stroke Kent's test. That's where it is at the moment. Confusingly, after you run it through Snapcraft, it goes somewhere completely different. Um, but the, the Snapcraft allows for that and puts a link to where it moves it to. So those are the important things you, you need to change. Um, if you're writing your own program, you can leave all the summary in description as is, but you need to ne change that to your program name. And you need to put your program name there. And again, the program name here to say where it is in the bin. You can leave all the rest of it alone. Again, here, you've got to have your program name. And you've got to put in the location because when you're doing this, and it's really annoying, but when you've written your Python masterpiece, you have to put it on GitHub because the way this um, program works, uh, when it rebuilds it into a snap, it drags all its needed dependencies off the internet. And so it's got to have your program on the internet as well. So it drags it in as a dependency. And source branch main. Um, in GitHub, it could be main, it could be test, it could be whatever. Um, so you've got to make sure that's main. My Git, GitHub location, there's the, the website for it. And it's uh, branch main. It's the first one. So you may have to edit that. And that's it. So basically you can use this YAML file as it is off the shelf, apart from changing the program name, changing that to development mode, which it probably already is, um, changing the name of your program there, changing the name of your program there, changing the name of your program there, and changing that to your GitHub location where it drags it from. So that's the YAML file. Right, and go back to Ken's test. Now, that is just the, the license, the GPO, general purpose license. So that's not, uh, not terribly important. The icon, of course, uh, you're gonna need an icon on your program. So stick an icon file there. <coughs> um, because let's have a look at the YAML file here. Just check the YAML file. Where is it? Um, apps. No, it's it's not um, it's not mentioning the icon at the moment, but you will need it eventually. That is a snap file that's been compiled, but again, that's not important just at the moment. But if we look at the uh, the installation file now, whoops. Um, the installation file, this this setup file. Um, it, it, first of all, it looks for a file name called init under dot py, which we mentioned, to get the version of your program. It looks for that. Um, and if it doesn't get it, if it doesn't find it, it crashes. So you put that in, in, in the, the dummy folder, just to give a version. Um, the next thing it looks for is a file called readme.md. Open that with Matchpad. See, and you put a long description of your program there. If this um, setup file, Python setup file, doesn't find it, it crashes. Um, actually, in that line of the code, they have uh, with open readme as file, read it, or there's an exception, it throws an exception. So that's okay. But it's as well to have that. The next file that it looks for is a file called requirements.txt here. Requirements.txt. 
or who would you mean? Oh, my mouse pad. Again, I've only got the name of my program in it, but in this setup file, there's no uh, no protection. It opens it, and if it doesn't find it, well, it crashes because there's no protection. There's no exception or, uh, or trap. So you've got to have it, unless you rewrite uh, the, the installation program. So at the moment, uh, with this stage of the game, it's easier for me just to uh, to put it uh, with a, some sort of dummy entry. So we've got that requirements. And then you've got this dreaded setup file, setup.py. We'll open that with Genie. And uh, you see what we mean from setup, import setup. Package name. You've got to put the name of your package in there. The file name. Ken, and that's where we've got the dummy file for it to get a version. File name equals Ken's test dot underline init py. Because you've got, you know, with open file name, and then it reads it. But there's no error trap, as you can see, it just opens the file name and reads it. But if it doesn't find it, it doesn't read it, well, it, it doesn't know what to do. So you've got to have a, file, a, a package name, um, you've got to enter there, the name of your program, and you've got to enter a line to say where it finds the uh, file to read the version. Then we've got this next section here where it looks for the long description and it reads the file readme.md and if it doesn't it uh, there is a trap on that one then the next one get requirements <coughs> open file name for requirements read and return well if it doesn't find it it crashes as you can see open it or or what so that, uh, that needs correcting one day. I might do it, I don't know. And then you've got all this that you've got to edit in the setup file. You've got to put in author's name, author's email, description. Again, just a, a, a dummy entry really, demo of using TK Inter. The URL to where the GitHub file is located, in my case, uh, that's where where I stored it on GitHub. Long description it reads off uh, off that po uh, code earlier. Package name again that was you entered that earlier. Package name equals look. Package name equals um, include package entry points. And again you got to enter something here. Console scripts the name name of your program Ken's test and you got to enter it again there. Ken's test. So you've got to edit that. So, so that's another thing you have to edit. So we've, we've got our program that we've written. We've got the dummy folder there, which does nothing. We've got the snap, which contains the, the YAML file, which you edit. And the setup file, which you have to edit. And uh, and some of these files that you have to have. So the easiest thing is to, to get all these from my zip folder, which I'll put on my website. And just extract them all in, onto your computer. Then, of course, you, you go on to GitHub. You create your, your GitHub um, location. And here it is, GitHub. Go to, uh, I don't know your name. This just shows you all the folders. Bin, which has got my software in it. Ken's test, which has that version code. Snap which has uh, some bits and bobs that you need. Manifest, which you, you edit yourself. ReadMeMD, you edit. Your general license, your icon file. Requirements that you have to edit. And the setup file, which you have to edit. Put all those on GitHub. Then, having done that, we can then open a command line. So with Linux, control alt T and you negotiate then to the folder on your home computer. So in this case it's C D Ken's dash test and list it. And there's there's all my 
my files and folders exactly the same as on GitHub. So because it's the same as on GitHub, we've got the YAML file. So if you just enter the word Snapcraft now, if we just type in Snapcraft, C R A F T, it will open and and enter. It will it will find the YAML file, which is in the uh, the folder Snap there, Snapcraft.yaml. It will find that, connect, follow the instructions in it, which gives the link. Um, oh, with Genie. It, which has the link to your GitHub because it doesn't use any local files. It doesn't use anything, even though you've got them on your computer. It's, you're only there so you can edit them yourself and then upload them. So it finds that GitHub and it, it links to it GitHub and it builds your Snapcraft file. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it at the moment because it takes ages. It's a very, very long build and, uh, and we'd all go to sleep. But if you enter that word Snapcraft, if all has been set up right, it will build your, your Snap file and uh, place it on your computer. Here, Ken's test version one, AMD 64.snap, and it places it on your computer. So then you can install it on your computer. And again, it's a little bit messy. I've got to refer to me, me notes here, if I can find them. Because this is a program you've created yourself in development mode, it's not signed and certified. So you can't install it in the normal Snapcraft way. Uh, because it doesn't get uh, signed and certified until you actually get it in the official Snap Store. So, to install, install it, we have to <coughs> trick, uh, trick the system a bit. So we give the command sudo snap. We're in the folder where it is, of course. sudo snap install. And then we have the name of the, the snap, which we can see there just above me. Ken's test. Ken's. Got to get it right. Ken's test. T E S T. Underline 1.0. Underline A M D. 64 dot snap and then because it's a development program and not signed we have to put dash dash dev mode space dash dash dangerous that's that's acknowledging that we're going to in force an install of something on the computer that um, is not certified as a, a, a proper official release. And then it will install it on the computer. We'll do that. It asks for your password. Mount snap security profiles. There we are. It's done. So now to run it, all we have to do is enter the word Ken's test. And there we are, it's opened and we're running our program. Um, later on, I, might, I, I may do another video going into how to, uh, how to put it on the menu and desktop icons and things like that but uh, that's enough for the moment and, uh, and that shows you how you can create a, a proper GUI program using TK Inter so it's all fairly straightforward really and if you go to my website 
cftb.net, which stands for Computing for the Bewildered, um, you'll be able to download the zip file and uh, extract it to a folder on your computer and take it from there. You can then uh, play around, install this basic little program, see it's working okay on your system, and then uh, then change it around to uh, have your own code and change the program name and, and so on. Just use this as a basic template uh, to develop your own software. So good luck with that. I um, hope you have fun with it.